Welcome to the latest episode of the My Wool Mitten podcast. I just wanted to pop in here and apologize for some of the wind uh, during the time that I was recording in the forest. It's not all the time, and I didn't want to edit it out and lose the film, so I hope you won't mind, and I hope that you will continue to watch just the same. Thank you for being here, and I hope that you enjoy the episode. Good morning and welcome to the My Wool Mitten podcast. My name is Carrie and I'm coming to you from the middle of the Mitten, Michigan's Lower Peninsula, from a small sheep farm where I live close by my family and with a small flock of sheep, as I probably mentioned. I'm walking this morning in the woods. It's the day before Mother's Day 2022 and the sun is out. We are back to some cold temperatures this morning, 40 degrees, which doesn't seem that cold, but there's a very cold wind coming straight out of the north but I wanted to get out here and walk and I've been trying to do some recording and it seems like at the house when I'm trying to record I just keep getting interrupted so I'm going to try this and we'll see how it looks I wanted to sit right in here amongst the daffodils but the sun's a little bit bright here so we might go deeper into the woods I hope you all are doing well I'm coming off of a social media break. I had a short update um, a few days ago, and this I think will be a little bit longer, but it still will be snippets, bits and pieces that I've recorded throughout the month to show you. Um, I've got some important administrative work to share with you, I guess we call it, and I'll probably do that as soon as I get settled in to start recording. But anyway, let's take a little walk deeper into the woods and sit down and have a chat. Okay, we're going to give this a try and hopefully the camera will stay here. I've got it on the tripod and the tripod is mounted on a, a small tree. And it looks a little shaky, but we'll see uh, if it will stay. Here's the, one of the trails behind me here and, so, and I'm facing north, so hopefully the light is okay. So I'm going to get talking here real quick because I don't know how long this is going to last and then we'll check the sound and such. Now, I mentioned that I had some administrative talk. I guess that's what podcasters usually call it. And here is mine. As I've mentioned, I think a couple times now, I took the social media break during Lent. And uh, that was mostly from Instagram and from recording a podcast. And I did get started back on that on Instagram, just with a few posts uh, earlier last week. And went along for those couple of days posting. I had posted in the morning, I can't remember which day, last Saturday, a week ago today, I believe. I had posted in the morning on my Instagram account, which is at my wool mitten, and went to post again that I had uploaded a podcast or a, a vlog episode, and I had to log in, no problem. I had just recently done that, so I entered my information and it came back that it was incorrect. Well, okay, maybe I typed something wrong. Entered it again. It still was wrong. And I try, I change my passwords um, every few months anyway, just because they say that's the safe thing to do. So I thought, well, okay, I'll just go ahead and change my password. It's not taking this one. So I'll just change it, change the password, and waited for the confirmation. And it came back that I had two-party verification, which I do on almost everything. Again, I had just used it. Well, long story short, uh, I, I have no idea what happened. Probably a mistake on my part, I don't know. But Instagram is not recognizing my account. It wants to contact me on a phone number that we haven't had for probably four years. Well, I don't have access to that phone number. I haven't had it in several years. And, um, you know, if you have two-party verification or if you can access a phone number or an email, I can access the email, that's no problem. Instagram tells you, right, in their little trip ticket that you can fill out, if you can't access this, we really can't help you. But I did file, a, I don't know if you call it a claim or a request uh, to try to gain access to that account. And uh, I've 
talked to a few people and read a few things that say if you hear back from them, and sometimes people do, it could be a month, month and a half, and so I was just so upset about it that I just left it be. Um, I haven't gone back to it. And plus, if you've monkeyed around with um, technology, you know that the more you try to access something you can't access, the more uh, red flags come up, I guess, and you can get locked out altogether. So anyway, it's just setting. So for those of you who follow me on Instagram, on my account, at my wool mitten, I can't access it. And it doesn't appear to have been hacked, thank goodness, and fingers crossed that that doesn't happen because I can't access it to correct or fix anything. But if you have followed me there, which I had just passed 2,000 subscribers, uh, something I was quite excited about. But if you follow me on Instagram as at my wool mitten, I'm not there right now, and I can't see your, uh, read your messages as if they're direct message. What I'm thinking about doing, and you guys tell me what you think. What I might do is open a new account. Um, I would probably call it something similar so that if anyone searched for my wool mitten, um, that they would maybe come up with this. I might do that, but I'd be starting all over again. Um, but at least do that temporarily so that I can post, um, I can maybe reach out to a few of you who would know that it's possibly me, or if you follow me here, you would know. That's what I'm thinking about doing. Um, and you guys let me know what you think, um, or just stay tuned here on Instagram, uh, where it's at my wool mitten, or where it's my wool mitten, and also on Ravelry, where if you can access that, where I'm my wool mitten. And what I will also do is put my um, email address in the down bar. So if you need to contact me, if you can't do it on Ravelry, if you don't want to leave a message here, I will put an email address down below and you can contact me there. If you follow me on Instagram or you know someone who does, or maybe it, you might want to put it on your Instagram account for me and just say that I can't access it right now, I would appreciate that very much. Um, or steer them in the direct, steer people in the direction of the podcast. So that's that. That's the administration work, I guess. Um, fingers crossed, prayers said, good wishes thought that maybe I can get this straightened out. Uh, so we'll see. We'll, uh, please uh, like and subscribe here so that you can maybe know what's going on. Okay, rambled about that long enough. You can see I'm a little bit rattled about it. So what else is happening? Um, haven't been doing any knitting here in the last little bit other than a, I should say just maybe two or three rows on a shawl that I'm finishing up that's a gift. Uh, have been spinning a little bit for my my third pair of socks and uh, so just a little bit of that. I did twist my ankle and so it's a little bit sore and so I haven't been spinning as much. Sheep are doing good. Uh, we're starting to get green grass and so they're not interested at all in hay and uh, but I have to keep them out of all of the pasture. I have to kind of quarter them off so that they don't get the grass down too short too quick. But they look good. Uh, I think the ewes are missing having lambs. And I say that not out of any sentimentality, but for those of you who have sheep who know that um, as the hormones go, I, I just think that the ewes know that this is the time of year that there should be lambs. And uh, I think there very well is going to be lambs next year. I've got, um, I can't wait to talk to you guys about that a little bit. And um, yeah, so there's that going on. Um, I'm going on a little adventure, if all goes as planned, here in the month of May. And I hope to take you along with me for that and share with you what's happening there. But nothing big, but to me it is. And so I'm going to share that with you. I have been doing some reading, but not what you might think. Um, I'm, one thing that I did decide for myself is that I knew I want to plant some trees on the homestead. And so that I have some ready to go. I have some that I dug up and wintered over and just making a decision on where those are going to go, where I'm going to lay that all out. I've had a lot of decisions to make over this winter. I think I um, hinted at that in the last vlog episode, and I have kind of come to them. I've actually kind of made myself a five, six year, let's call it a six year plan, because I'm going to think it's probably going to be a five and a half year plan. And so as I was struggling with some decisions over the winter and talking to different people, even watching some podcast episodes, 
Even when my shearer and his wife were here, they talked about their five-year plan, all of these young people. And I thought, you know what? Why can't I have a five-year plan? And so I sat down and I did that. And I'm anxious to share that with you guys and get your feedback about it. So the books I've been reading are about trees on the homestead, using trees in pasture. Um, if you haven't heard of silvo pasture before or um, tree grazing, those kinds of things. Uh, just do a quick look at those. It, it kind of falls under the permaculture heading, um, but I'm, I'm not doing permaculture. I'm just, I'm planting some trees, but maybe using some <laughs> practices that we've done for a lot of years, and now now they have a title, I guess, permaculture. It's, it's a buzzword now, or it's a real thing. It's, I'm not making light of it. It's a real thing. So I'm doing some of that. And you know, that can get overwhelming, just like planting your seeds for the garden can. And so one of the books that I'm reading and um, Trees for Grazers, I'll, I'll put a picture or a link in here for the exact name of it. Um, he make, made a very good point. He said, if you can't, you know, when it's so overwhelming, commit to planting 10 trees. And so that's what I'm doing. For 2022, I'm committed to planting 10 trees in my landscape. Hopefully, maybe it will be more, but that it's going to be a minimum of 10. So stay tuned for that. The other thing I'm reading is, <laughs> it's a seed catalog, but of a different sort. It's for um, forage crops and fall planting to feed livestock. Now my livestock is just sheep, but uh, I need some rejuvenation. And so I'm gonna try to do some of that. So I see that I've gone over 10 minutes on this little chat and oh, there's the wood ducks. Darn it, I've recorded before when they've come in. And of course I can't get the camera turned around quick enough to show you. I thought I was far enough away from their nesting spot that I wouldn't disturb them, but they just came in from somewhere. There's uh, a water, it's actually kind of a swamp over here. It's not a pond and it's not fresh water, but that's normally where they they nest somewhere near there, and they just came in and lit in, in a, uh, that's an oak tree over there that they just lit in. So I'm glad to see that. Real glad to see that. So I think that's all for that. I'm going to put a little bit of garden footage in here that I've already recorded. It's not the best recording because I only record, as you guys know, on my camera phone. But I did want to show you a little bit of what I've been doing and a few discoveries. And I mentioned in the recording that I did about a podcaster that I've started to follow. And I want to mention her again here and give her really the credit that she deserves. Her name is Hannah and her podcast here on YouTube is called Sweet Fern Homestead. She's also on Instagram and she does have a Patreon. But um, go really, her her woodpecker. Her podcasts aren't long, they're vlog style, but I don't know how I happened to come across her. I found her on, on YouTube, first of all. And this young woman is wise, wise, wise beyond her years. And maybe it's just that she's speaking to me at this time of my life, but she has been such a motivation for me and just her wholehearted kind-hearted approach to gardening, homesteading, um, family food farming, because she's on a suburban lot. But it, I would recommend really to go back and watch her first episode. It's something of like the, the Fence That Love Built, I think it's called. And then a more recent one that she did um, about homes, like the title of homesteading. And I'll put a link down below to that so that you can go and watch those two they're both short and I think you will be inspired and I'd really love to see her YouTube channel grow for her let me turn just a little bit the sun is coming through the trees probably a good time to move on so I really want to encourage you to check out Hannah because uh, as I'm 20 some years older than she is but uh, she really speaks to my heart. And so I'd love to give her a lot of love and encouragement and see her channel grow. So go check her out and tell her that I sent you, if you don't mind. So let's see, it's um, now 15 minutes and I've still rambled on and the sun is getting bright. 
I'm looking over to see what the wood ducks are doing. They probably are wondering what I'm doing. So let's go for a little bit more of a walk here in the woods. I hope if you are in the States and celebrating Mother's Day that it's a wonderful Mother's Day for you. If it's a painful time for you, um, I hope you just take a little time for yourself too and, um, and come back soon. Try to follow along and see what's going to happen with my Instagram account. Darn it, like I said, I just had passed 2,000 subscribers there, which is a big deal for me. And I interacted with a lot of you there. But we'll get it figured out and uh, get back to work. So anyway, let's go for a little bit more of a walk and then we'll go on to the garden and maybe a few minutes of police. I just thought I'd show you real quick that this was my podcasting chair for today. This is where I was just sitting and recording. Okay, on for that walk. And going on down the trail, I, where I was just sitting is behind the camera right now, looking across at the daffodils, and then off in the distance is the pond or the swampy area where the wood ducks like to spend their time. And they had just come in and landed in an oak tree there. So I thought I'd show you that. That's what I was watching. I imagine the wind is messing with the microphone, but I just wanted to share too. It's always interesting each year to see where the daffodils pop up where they migrate to. And this is a spot that there haven't been daffodils before, but um, yeah, another, they continue to bring that joy and delight and surprise. Now here's something I'm quite excited about. Maybe you recognize it. If not, I'll tell you about it in a minute. And here's something I'm not so excited about. So you probably recognize Creeping Charlie. And I know, I know people are gonna say, oh, there's health benefits and it's medicinal and it's this and it's that, and that's probably all true. But in my vegetable garden, I don't want it taking over, so. I'm not sure where it came from, but it started here somewhere and it's really filling in along these edges. So the ground is nice and soft right now. I know pulling it's gonna leave some behind and maybe spread it, but I'm not gonna use any spray on it. So we'll work on getting that out. But then as I was cleaning, and here's chickweed, my fine looking things are, I don't know, can you see this? Look at my dirty hands now. But this is some dill from the garden from last year. So I've got a lot of little patches of dill and I'm gonna just leave them. And I don't know why, but this little exciting discovery made me think of my friend Hannah from Sweet Firm Homestead. Hi, Hannah. And I thought, now how excited would you be to have found this in your garden? Back to work. Continuing with the idea of documenting befores and afters. I've decided that this little triangle is going to be herbs this year. Right now, I thought you guys would think, how clever am I? In my old refrigerator crisper door drawer, there's microgreens and baby radishes and some spring onion. So I've got a plan for this. I've got to get the rest of the grass out of that area. I've got a lot of bronze fennel coming up. If anybody's nearby me and needs some bronze fennel, I'm going to have some. Can you see the little leaves starting to come out on my willow starts? Put those in, oh, a month or better ago. And there's some peppermint coming in here. This is a teeny tiny red bud. I don't know if it survived. I, I trimmed the top a little bit and there was some green, but we'll see. Last year, the deer and the rabbits ate my 
flowering pink almond right down, but it looks like it's come back. That makes me super happy. Well, I think you guys that I'm going to save the fleece video for the next podcast. This is getting long enough. I hope that you were all right with not seeing sheep or fleece in this episode, but um, it's getting dark and I thought I'd leave you with this little clip of the beautiful cherry tree by the barn. And I just want to say thank you again for being here, for following along, for your support and your friendship. I hope you'll have a wonderful weekend and we'll talk to you real soon.